In part one of this series, we introduced the concept of combustion described by a gas phase reaction that converts fuel to combustion products. In part two, we showed how we can define the fuel chemistry and calculate the heat of combustion due to stoichiometric combustion. Now we approach the actual simulation of a fire. One of the strengths of FDS, the fire dynamic simulator, is that it can be a useful tool for both a fire protection engineer and a fire researcher. The challenge is that this can result in a bewildering array of options with respect to modeling the combustion process. In many cases, describing a fire using the energy release rate is both the simplest and most reliable approach. Adding unnecessary complexity only slows the simulation and increases uncertainty. Even if you intend to do a more complex simulation, first perform an analysis with the specified heat release rate to check your model and to gain an understanding of the scope of your problem. To guide this discussion, we will use an experiment and supporting analysis performed at the VTT Research Center of Finland. The work is described in a paper that can be downloaded at the indicated web address. The focus of the paper was on smoke and toxic gas concentrations resulting from combustion of four different fuels. I chose this example for several reasons. First, the paper clearly describes the details of both the experiment and the supporting analysis. Second, one of the experiments burned a wood crib. The SFPE Handbook of Fire Protection Engineering provides equations that predict the heat release rate for such a fire. This gives us the opportunity to compare experimental values with the SFPE calculation. Third, this demonstrates that even high-level research can be successfully performed with a simple heat release rate model. The VTT experiments were performed in a 10 by 10 by 5 meter room with steel walls and a steel ceiling. A wood crib was positioned in the center of the room and was approximately a cube with one half meter sides. In our first model, we will not represent the details of the wood sticks, but will just approximate the fire with a simple cube. Modeling the geometry of the room the open entrance, and the air vent is straightforward. We use a steel material, define a surface that is 2 millimeters thick, and create obstructions that represent the walls and ceiling. The wood crib is a cube with one half meter sides. The geometry is the easy part. Now let's talk about the fire. We are burning wood. The paper provides the chemical composition and some measured values of the wood we will use. We will see that the stoichiometric combustion calculation for this composition provides a heat of combustion of 14.54 megajoules per kilogram, as compared to the independent experimental value of 17.9. We will use the experimental value of 17.9 in our simulation. Given the dimensions of the wood crib, the mass of fuel, and the heat of combustion, the SFPE handbook provides a method to predict the heat release rate as a function of time as the wood crib burns. For this geometry, the heat release rate is initially limited by the porosity of the wood crib, which limits air flow through the crib. Later in the burn, the amount of wood surface area controls the burn rate. The heat release rate was also measured in the experiments. This graph shows a comparison of the experimental data, the SFPE calculation, and the calculated FDS heat release rate obtained after completing our simulation. I was impressed by how well the SFPE calculation approximated the experimental data. Now we are ready to define the fire. To define the reaction for the fire, we give the chemical components and explicitly require the heat of combustion to be equal to the experimental value of 17.9 megajoules per kilogram. Next, we define the burner surface. One detail here. 
The total peak heat release rate we will model is 675 kilowatts, but surface heat release rates are specified per unit area. So we divide 675 by 1.25 to obtain a peak heat release rate per unit area of 540 kilowatts per meter squared. The ramp function is used to define how the heat release rate varies with time. This function multiplies the specified value of 540 kilowatts per meter squared. The last thing we do is calculate D star to estimate the required mesh size. This calculation gives a value of 0.16 meters. For this simulation, we will use a value of 0.2 meters. I used two meshes so that I could take advantage of parallel processing to speed the simulation. Support for parallel processing is integrated into Pyrosyn. Press the Run button and wait for the simulation to finish. We first plot the calculated heat release rate and confirm that the correct amount of fuel was injected into the simulation. We can use Smoke View to display the smoke and calculated air velocities as the fire develops. We continue our investigation into the simulation by plotting device results, such as smoke layer height, as a function of time. So, to summarize, specifying the heat release rate to model combustion is often the most reliable way to simulate a fire. The heat release rate can either represent a fire specified in regulations, be experimentally measured, or, as this case demonstrated, could be calculated following SFPE guidelines for a wood crib fire. Although specifying heat release rate is the simplest way to model a fire, results of such a simulation are not trivial and can be successfully used, as shown in the VTT paper, to evaluate smoke and toxic gas concentrations by changing the combustion reaction. We will discuss a simple ignition model in the next video.